This is E.T. Much of the material for this video comes from this book here. It was co-written by Robin Montgomery, Ph.D., and a businessman and attorney named Roy Harris. And this here is Roy Harris. From Cut and Shoot, Texas, who on August 18 of 1958 challenged heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson for that heavyweight title. Now this bout, Patterson versus Harris, first aroused a 15-year-old E.T.'s passion for boxing, although he did have a general interest that began when an earlier champion, Rocky Marciano, battered Don Cockell senseless. I think that was May of 1955. Some of you experts may want to correct me on that. Much of E.T.'s renewed interest had to do with the ballyhoo surrounding Harris, intended by promoters to peak fan excitement and thus boost ticket sales for closed-circuit viewing around the country. Harris was portrayed as a, an early version of the Beverly Hillbillies Jethro Bodine. Well, you can get the idea of what I'm talking about from this Sports Illustrated cover, which I do remember. Here's a picture of Roy wearing a cowboy hat and boots. He's bare-chested, very lean, barefoot, standing on a porch of a cabin somewhere deep in the big thicket. There's a 19th century rifle, you can see, a hunting dog beside him. Harris topped off all this image manufacturing with a country and western record. 45 RPM, it was called Desert in the sky. You can hear it on YouTube. This manufacture image is what grabbed a young E.T.'s imagination. A rough and tumble, no holds barred gator wrestling son of Texas. And with an undefeated professional record backed by four Texas Golden Gloves championships. And now he's about to take the most prized title in all sports, from a New York City champion. So all this, and a successful amateur career, just had to translate into the heavyweight crown. These legends captured a young E.T.'s imagination while he ignored or never heard the facts that contradicted that Jethro Bodine persona. So here's what was not emphasized what E.T. discovered later. Non-emphasized point one. Roy Harris was not the number one contender and thus most deserving to fight for the title. He was, however, number three. Zora Fawley was considered number one, Eddie Machen number two, but both of them had recently fought to a very boring draw, and that, plus Gus D'Amato's influence, ruled both men out. D'Amato was Patterson's manager. Although Roy's unbeaten record to date included very good opposition, including victories over uh, Vili Vesmanov and uh, Willie Pastrano, Pastrano being a superb boxer. Number two, not emphasized point, Harris was closer to being a light heavyweight, and he was not considered a heavy puncher. He was not anywhere as fast or coordinated as Patterson, although Roy's left jab was lightning quick. You can read it in the papers of that period. Fastest left in the West. And he had an uppercut that could be devastating, but it had to land on the right spot. Harris was described by insiders as being awkwardly clever and with a limited ability to bob and weave. And all of this is tailor-made for Floyd Patterson. Point number three, non-emphasized. Roy Harris, when he met Patterson, was nowhere near in fighting condition. After graduating from Sam Houston College, a married Roy needed money, and he earned it as a teacher. Now, that's not a job to promote physical conditioning and fighting skills. Then Roy, as a new second lieutenant, had to fulfill a six-month's military obligation. 
and it was completed just weeks prior to his meeting Patterson. During the time he was in the service, he had little time to do more than work a punching bag and do a little running. Even worse, Roy, right before in the month before the fight, was steadily losing weight, and much of that was muscle. He attributes it to a lack of carbohydrates. At the time, he didn't know much about nutrition. And he had only days for anything approaching serious training. And that training was in the mountains near Los Angeles. At an altitude he hadn't had time to adjust to. When Roy's manager showed up a week before the fight, and by the way, he was also managing Joe Brown, who was uh, that great lightweight champion who also was up for a championship fight. Roy's manager was shocked when he saw how poorly Roy was conditioned, and he asked that the fight be postponed. It was Roy Harris himself who refused. Then his manager got Roy, who, by the way, avoided beer, to drink some, just to pack on some weight. It did add a little, but it wasn't muscle. And I should add here, although the newspapers say that Roy Harris came in at a solid 190-something, either 194 or 196, depending on what reporter made up the story, Roy and others will attest to the fact that he was not even 190 pounds, and what he had put on was not muscle. Well, the effect of, of all this was to reduce Roy's stamina, and that was something he was known for. It was that, plus his skill, that allowed him to beat Willie Pastrano. Pastrano, former light heavyweight champion and a formidable heavyweight. That stamina was the one thing that could carry Roy Harris to a victory over Patterson. Non-emphasized point number four, Harris wasn't anything approaching his manufactured image. That ignorant backwoods brawler whose whole life depended on boxing. In fact, he was extremely smart. A college graduate who eventually passed the Texas bar exam he was elected and re-elected for decades, county clerk. He was the primary attorney who would incorporate the town of Cut and Shoot. He ran a successful law office and real estate business. And six months prior to meeting Patterson, Roy served as an active duty commissioned U.S. Army officer. Now that's an occupation which does not exactly fit the image of a down and out extremely hungry, win-at-all-cost, backwoods brawler. And it's not an occupation that can provide adequate time and training facilities for any kind of fight, least of all for the championship. Non-emphasized point number five that E.T. just didn't want to remember was this. Patterson was a six-to-one favorite. Well, as to the fight... The result of the Patterson-Harris fight, it was held at Los Angeles' Wrigley Field on August 18 of 1958. Well, it certainly did not go, as young E.T. expected. Harris, however, did knock down Patterson in the second round. At least it might have been a knockdown. But Roy himself would suffer four knockdowns later and severe eye cuts. It was so bad that his corner stopped the fight before the 13th round. Roy Harris subsequently won his next six fights, and it was over top opposition. Charlie Powell, Donnie Fleeman, Joe Bygraves. But then he stepped into the ring with Sonny Liston. Look at this photo of Roy Harris facing Sonny Liston. Roy looks absolutely frail for this one. Now, this is at a time when anabolics are legal and uh, being used in virtually every sport. And I'm not saying that Roy's opponent here was taking, let's say, Diana Ball, but he could have. After being uh, beaten by Liston in less than a round, Roy dropped a decision to Henry Cooper. Well, no shame in that. And he was stopped twice by monster puncher Bob Clairot. 
Well, now Roy Harris is done with pro boxing. But with a brain still intact, he began using it to become a very successful lawyer, businessman, politician, and by some accounts a millionaire. Now at the age of 89 in 2023, Roy is retired, proud father of six, grandfather of nine. Now an interesting tidbit. During Roy's college student days, he was an ROTC cadet, Reserve Officer Training Corps cadet. One day, he knocked down an officer who Roy believed it hit him. Well, as a result, Roy was booted out of ROTC, which meant he faced being drafted. But he was reinstated, and he was reinstated because of a petition drive run by a college pal. That college pal later became a highly regarded TV correspondent and the news anchor for decades on CBS television. His name, Dan Rather. And that's it. The story of E.T.'s boyhood hero. And he remains so to this day, mainly for what he's done since pro boxing. He's Roy Harris, barefoot boxer from Cut and Shoot. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, type in your comments below, share this video and others on social media. Thank you.